This video is not meant to criticize anyone, but I believe the current September 23rd, 2015 craze is disinformation meant to discredit the truth. And the truth I'm talking about is the truth about the recent fulfillments of Bible prophecy that indicate a giant meteorite will hit sometime between now and 2024. It's a 10-year window that we're in right now, and that window will not close until 2025 unless something happens between now and then. So every year between now and 2024, the giant meteorite that is prophesied in the Bible will be a possibility because of the predictions that have come true in the Bible, which give a very specific timeline. I agree that 2015 is a huge watch year and this summer has been especially big because of the end of the maximum length of a generation in the book of Matthew and several other things I've mentioned before. But the September craze that a lot of the Christian channels have been talking about is based primarily on movies and television and that's the first indication that it's disinformation in my opinion. I agree that Hollywood predicted 9-11 the date and event was depicted in movies and TV years before September 2001, but 9-11 was a man-made event that could easily be predicted by whomever planned it, and there have been other disinformation campaigns since then. So I want to point out four reasons in this video why we know the biblical asteroid will not hit on September 23, 2015. Number one, the prophetic texts that were compiled into what we now call the Bible are accurate. I've been proving that for years, and I know others have been proving that too. So when we acknowledge and accept, for example, that the book of Matthew got the timeline right, then it makes sense that we would pay attention to the whole code and not just parts of it. The timeline in the book of Matthew tells us we will not know the day or the hour of the asteroid impact. I understand some people argue about the meaning of Matthew 24, 36, but the meaning is clear in Matthew 25, 13. It says we will not know the day or the hour when the Son of Man comes. The phrase Son of Man comes is code for the asteroid impact. Matthew Matthew 24 tells us the stars will fall when the Son of Man comes. Luke 17 says that as well, fire and brimstone will fall from heaven in the day the Son of Man is revealed. We've looked at the timing of that in great detail in other videos. It says that's when the rescue will occur and the meteorite will hit. It's also known as the start of the third time of trouble. The text tell us there are three watches for the final event. One occurred in 70 CE, the second occurred in 685, and the third occurred in 2012. The first two watches culminated in horrendous events that were internationally recognized. In 70 CE, it was the siege of Jerusalem by the Roman Empire, and in 685, it started a 1260-year period of persecution and murder of anyone who refused to go along with the religious ideology of the Roman Empire, and that ended with the nuclear bombs on Japan. This next event is prophesied to be the biggest in this civilization's history. Three significant events occurred in 2012 that the text told us will precede the final time of trouble. We're told the third and final time of trouble will start at the end of the tribulation of the days and at the start of the final three and a half years. That tribulation of the days, we are told, is a 1260-year period that is specifically marked by the celebration of the Christmas holiday and the rise of the Vatican, which seems to have begun around 754, 755, or 756. So again, the prophesied meteorite, we're told, will occur when the Son of Man comes, and that is at the end of the 1260 years of Christmas celebrations and Vatican rule. We are in the time frame now, but Matthew 25 is clear that we will not know the day or the hour of that impact. This means the term midnight in verse 6 does not refer to the hour of the day. It also means that whatever date is popularized is not going to be the date of the asteroid. Currently, the September 23rd asteroid prediction has approximately 7 million results on Google, so it cannot possibly be the date since we're told no one will know the date. Something else may occur on that date, I can't say I don't know, but if we trust these texts, and I do because they've been proven accurate, then we trust when it says no one will know the exact date of the meteorite. Again, maybe something else will happen, I don't know, but it will not be the biblical asteroid apocalypse. Here's the second reason. We know the book of Joel gave some very interesting prophecies that came true specifically about the nuclear bombs and missiles. Joel makes reference to a solar and lunar eclipse that some believe may refer to the eclipse patterns culminating 
in September 2015. But if we were to believe that Joel was referring to the solar and lunar eclipses in September of this year, then we must also acknowledge that he says the solar and lunar eclipse will occur before the Day of the Lord. The Day of the Lord is another code. It's also known as the Day of the Lord's Wrath, a time of darkness. And in Revelation 6, we're told it refers specifically to the asteroid impact when the stars fall from heaven. Joel 2 seems to be saying the solar and lunar eclipse will occur before the asteroid impact. So again, if we were to believe Joel is referring to the solar and lunar eclipse in September 2015, then it says those eclipses will occur before the giant meteorite. I'm personally not saying the eclipses in September are the eclipses that Joel referred to, nor am I saying the standard translation in Joel 2 is correct, but for those who are saying that, please consider the contradiction. Either you believe the asteroid will hit in September, or you believe Joel 2 refers to the September eclipses, or you believe the translation in Joel 2 is correct. It can't be all three together because they contradict. Joel 2 says the asteroid will hit after the solar and lunar eclipse. If the solar and lunar eclipse in Joel refer to the eclipses in September, and the traditional translation of that verse is correct, then it's saying the asteroid will hit after the eclipses, not during. Again, I'm not saying that myself. I recognize that the verse in Joel can also be read that the wrath will occur with the eclipses. And I also recognize that the eclipses in Joel may not refer to the eclipses this September. There's nothing that I'm aware of in the text that say for sure. Here's the third point. The Jewish feast days in September are not the true biblical feast days. I have a video on the true calendar link below. The standard Jewish calendar that most people observe is false. It's not based on the biblical method, it's based on modern technology. We had a serious confirmation of the true biblical calendar in 2012 when the celestial configuration described in Revelation 12 occurred on the true Feast of Trumpets. That was literally the appointed sign of trumpets that occurred in 2012. I've proven that, but no one will listen, and the fact that no one will listen is also a fulfillment of the prophecy. The point is, the true appointed times of the seventh month, as listed in the prophetic text of the Bible, do not occur in September this year. They occur in October. Atonement may be the next appointment to be fulfilled. It's possible. I've said that before. But if it is, then it refers to the true time of atonement, not atonement on the false calendar. The true Feast of Atonement on the biblical calendar, as we're told to observe it and calculate it, will occur in the window of October 21st through the 23rd this year. And I'm not saying Saying that's the date of the apocalypse either. Here's the fourth point. There are three time periods mentioned in the first chapter of the book of Matthew that indicate the exact length of a generation. On the prophetic timeline that seems to have started in 1947, two of those time periods have passed, and the third will pass after September 7th this year. I find that very interesting because it may be telling us either the asteroid will hit before that, or the September craze is a deception. If we move past September 8th without incident, then we can reach one of two conclusions. Either number one, the fig tree does not represent the country of Israel, or number two, the length of a generation in chapter 1 of the book of Matthew is not the length of a generation in chapter 24. There's no guarantee that we can find the exact length of a generation anywhere in the biblical text. I'm not saying there's nothing of significance happening in September this year. I think most people agree, religious and non-religious alike, that the Pope's address to Congress is huge. It has never happened before, and he'll be standing in the D.C. Temple of Saturn. Also, the eclipses may be significant as well, but September 23rd is not the date of the asteroid. I don't know the date, and neither does anyone else, including the Illuminati. The texts tell us the angels don't even know the date. So that means even if the Illuminati are fallen angels, they don't know the date of the asteroid. That's why I don't pay attention to movie and television subliminals anymore. They've deceived many times before. I just want to make you aware of what I think is a disinformation campaign. Disinformation campaigns are very real, and they're usually targeted toward discrediting real truth, such as what we've been uncovering in the past few years on this channel, namely that Yahweh is the beast, the UN is the seventh head of the beast and the eighth king, Israel is the little horn, and the Christians, Jews, and Muslims are worshiping the beast and little horn now exactly as prophesied. The Bible prophecies that have a proven track record do indicate that a giant meteorite will hit sometime between now and the year 2024, and both 2015 and 2016 are very big watch years because we appear to be in the midst of Daniel's seven-year period. But the window for this watch will not close until 2025. For 
For more information on the real truth about the Bible's prophecy of the asteroid, you can watch the playlist Bible's Countdown to the Asteroid. I hope you're all doing well, and I'll talk to you later.